Hey, welcome back to the Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. And today we have Mission Force One. This is a one season series from 2017. It's got like a lot of episodes. Uh, oh, wait, it says 21 episodes. So there's only one season. But I looked on IMDb and there's like 70, like different actors sh it shows how many episodes they appear in. There's like 75, at least 75 episodes. And each episode has two stories. They're about 24. 22 minutes long each. Let me see. Yeah, 24 minutes long each on average. And uh, this wasn't always called Mission Force One, which I always thought was a really generic name. Well, not always. For the whole day that I've known about this, <laughs> Mission Force One uh, used to be called Miles from Tomorrowland. And uh, I, I don't know what it is with Tomorrowland. I, I think they're trying to rebrand because uh, they they added the movie Tomorrowland you know, with George Clooney back in September last year, and then it disappeared like weeks later. I, I don't know what's going on with the whole Tomorrowland thing. Uh, but, yeah, so Miles from Tomorrowland, it's, I mean, it stars a character named Miles, and they run the Tomorrowland uh, Transit Authority. They It's a bunch of kids who handle... Um, train robber space train robberies and other things other attacks that are made on different things by robot bad guys uh, their enemies are robots so there's no chance of children fighting scary adults that actually shoot things at them it's always and there's nothing that nothing human that they have to harm uh, it's it's kids and there's like a blobby kid like he's a alien blob there's a girl who's like blue with pointy ears it's very much Star Trek for kids I mean yes we have Star Trek Prodigy but that is actually more mature than I thought it was going to be that is very much a uh, yes it's it's more focused towards kids but it is also very much a it has a much more mature, mature themes, themes that, say, young teenagers uh, would understand as compared to five-year-olds. This is very much on the level... It's Disney. It's a Disney Junior show, so it's very much low-level uh, things. So the f funny thing is the very first uh, voice you hear in this is Neil deGrasse Tyson as a narrator uh, for what's going on. He kind of explains what's going on in this. Uh, and there's a ton of other names. This is like an all-star cast of Disney voiceover actors. Uh, we got Tom Kenny, SpongeBob SquarePants. We got Greg Griffin. We got Diedrich Bader. We got Olivia Munn, who is uh, Psylocke in in uh, the X-Men Apocalypse movie. She's also used to be on G4. She's married to well, uh, she had a baby. She's not married. She had a baby with John Mulaney. All the Dee Bradley Baker, of course, who does. Just about every show, but especially Star Wars, he's known for the voice of the clones and so many other things. Uh, Fiona Bishop, uh, yeah, Greg Griffin, I said that. There's a bunch of kids, too. There's actual kids playing kids, and there's actually one over the course of the series. I think at least three different kids, and one of them was a girl, play the voice of Miles. So, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, uh... It's a lot. There's a lot of people. I mean, I, again, kids grow up, voices change, and so they can't really... It's hard to find probably kids that are decent voice actors who can, who have the right tone and the right energy uh, per, to portray what essentially looks like a bunch of eight-year-olds in space. They all have, space, they have a spaceship, and uh, they all have, they have space robo-pets, and... Uh, it's all sorts of wacky wackiness. It's not for me. No, I mean I love Star Trek and I, you know, I love animation and things like that, but it's not made for me. So there's no reason for me to be like, oh, you know what? This hits me where I am. No, it's not. That's not a thing. Uh, I mean, it's cute. It's uh, especially if you have little ones and you say you want to someday get them into Star Trek, and you're like, oh well, this is a nice jumping off point. Seeing kids work together, teamwork showing encouragement uh in and there's excitement there's battles in a sense but nothing that looks like a lethal weapon nobody is shooting an actual laser at them maybe there's space bolo bolos like they spin like they're like a glowing cord that maybe would capture them but never actually 
shoot them, you know. Uh, even the robots, I, I think they head, they don't even really blow up at all. They just sort of fall apart. Uh, <laughs> um, oh, one other voice I had to mention, speaking of robots, is Don, John DiMaggio, who is best known as playing one of the most famous animated robots, Bender on Futurama. He also plays the sidekick to the main bad guy, at least in the first episode. And he's comic relief, of course, but he's undeniably John DiMaggio. He's, 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 he's not Bender. He's not a Kiss My Shiny Metal Ass kind of Bender, but he is, he's meant to be funny and, uh, and is uh, creative in that. Uh, Adrian Grenier, uh, Grenier from uh, Entourage is in this, in a, like 12 episodes or so. Hey, Mark Hamill shows up. Uh, oh, and Bill Nye, the, the science guy, shows up. Good grief, there are so many. Kevin Michael Richardson, of course. He is a voice actor in just about everything. Will Wheaton from Star Trek does uh, makes an appearance at some point. Chris Summer, she's an icon at voiceover work. Whoopi Goldberg. So yeah. Uh, oh, Brenda Song, she's a she's a bit of a Disney icon. So yeah, there's just so many. Rob Paulson. I'm just gonna list all the names. Lavar Burton. Okay, I'm gonna basically pretty much uh, there's Commander Riker. There's Jonathan Frakes. I think pretty much everybody, there's a lot of Star Trek people showing up in this. Because, hey, guess what? It's Star Trek for kids. <laughs> so it makes sense that they would hire Star Trek actors to play at least one role for one episode. And it's a nice little nod to the parents who are like, a little reward to the parents who are like, hey, get your kids into sci-fi adventure. Way to go. And, uh, Maybe someday they'll grow up and they'll watch the Next Generation crew on their adventures. Yeah. You never know. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. Uh, but if you're an adult sitting at home alone, eh, it's probably not your thing. Probably not going to be your thing. It's cute. Maybe you want to watch certain episodes that have certain actors in them, see what they do. Yeah. But uh, this is for those with little kids. So give it a shot if that's the case. Let's pick tomorrow's episode. 369. Man, we're staying in the 300s. 369. <sighs> 369. I don't have to scroll far. Oh, well, this isn't bad at all. This is. This will be an easy one. It's a, it's a short, and it's one of the classic shorts, I think. It is starring Pluto. It's Pluto and the Gopher. Pluto and the Gopher. Probably one of those old Disney ones. We'll see. Probably in the 30s or 40s or something like that. Pluto and the Gopher are the next Disney Plus Everyday Challenge. I'll see you back here tomorrow with that.